Let's discuss the normal distribution, z-scores, or standard scores, and calculating probabilities in Excel. What exactly is this curve? You may have seen it before and recognize that it is the normal distribution curve, or maybe you've seen it called the bell curve. Though still, what is it? To help illustrate the normal distribution curve, I'm going to use this example data set of 1.5 mile run times for 50 sailors in the US Navy. To be clear, this is not real data. Rather, I'm using a normal distribution random number generator to create this data. Though looking at this table, we can see that most of the sailors run about 9 or 10 minute 1.5 miles, which is really good, though I'd like to visualize this data better. To visualize the 1.5 mile run times, I created a histogram. Hmm. Interesting. Do you notice that bell shape in this histogram? Remember that I said that I use the normal distribution random number generator to create this data. Suppose I had more data. Now instead of 50 sailors, I have 100 sailors. I'm still using the same random number generator to create this data. Though this histogram is slightly less symmetrical. This is because random numbers will occasionally pick extremes, and it appears that some slower runners are making this distribution look slightly skewed. The more data you have, the better. Look, when I have a thousand sailors, I see extremes on both sides. So again, you see here the nice symmetrical bell curve. This brings me to my point. What is that really nice bell curve I showed you several slides back? It's kind of like a histogram for a data set with infinite data. So much data that the widths of these bars get super thin and they line up perfectly to make the perfect bell shaped curve. So how do we know when data is normally distributed? What makes the normal distribution special? Well, I've mentioned quite a few times the importance of this histogram being bell-shaped or symmetrical. Of course, depending on the size of your data, the histogram may not be exactly symmetrical, though it needs to be approximately symmetrical. Second, we need the empirical rule to be approximately true for the data. So what is the empirical rule? Basically, the empirical rule states three things. First, 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean. So if here's the mean, then if I were to go one standard deviation below and one standard deviation above the mean, then 68% of the data would be in that range. Second, 95% of the data must be within two standard deviations of the mean. So if the mean is here at the center, if I were to go one and then another standard deviation away in both directions, one standard deviation, two standard deviations away from the mean, then wherever that lined up, I would have 95% of the data within those two standard deviations from the mean, 95%. Lastly, 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean. So once again, if the mean is in the center, and then I go one, two, three standard deviations below the mean, and one, two, three standard deviations above the mean, then the amount of data that would be captured in that range three standard deviations above and below the mean is almost all of it. 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean. Okay, so all this talk about the number of standard deviations from the mean. It's important to know that this idea, the number of standard deviations from the mean, is very important. 
It's so important, in fact, that statisticians made a definition for it called Z-scores. Sometimes you'll see it written as standard scores. Z-scores are the number of standard deviations from the mean. There's a very nice formula that we can use to calculate Z-scores. Z equals X minus mu divided by sigma, where this mu is the mean and sigma is the standard deviation. Let's talk through an example using a z-score. Suppose the 1.5 mile run times for sailors in the US Navy is normally distributed with mean 10.5 minutes and standard deviation 1.1 minutes. Tom runs 1.5 miles in seven minutes. Find the number of standard deviations Tom's runtime is from the mean. Basically, that is asking you to find the z-score for Tom's runtime. And determine if Tom is an unusually fast sailor. Okay, so let's start with our formula z equals x minus mu divided by sigma. Okay, what is mu and what is sigma? Let's start with mu. Mu is, remember, it's the mean. So the mean is 10.5 minutes, right? They told us that the mean for the run times for these sailors is 10.5 minutes. Sigma is the standard deviation. If you read the question, it says that the standard deviation is 1.1 minutes. So sigma equals 1.1. Okay, so now what is x? x is whatever you're trying to find the z-score for, right? We're trying to find the z-score for Tom's run time. Remember, Tom run, ran his 1.5 miles in seven minutes. So his, that's Tom's run time, the seven minutes. Okay, so now to calculate z, I'll plug in these variables I just found. X was seven, mu was 10.5, sigma was 1.1, okay? Don't forget you have to do what's in the numerator first before you can do the division. So seven minus 10.5 is negative 3.5 divided by 1.1. And if you plug that into your calculator, you'll get negative 3.18. Okay, so that's Tom's z-score. His runtime is 3.18 standard deviations below the mean. Right, so if I were to draw out to this distribution, the mean is 10.5. Tom ran his mile down here at seven minutes. Okay, and remember that since these run times are normally distributed, we know that 68% of the run times will be within one standard deviation from the mean. So in other words, within z equal negative one and z equal positive one. We also know that within two standard deviations of the mean, we'll have 95% of the runs will be within two standard deviations of the mean, or in other words, z equal two. Okay, lastly, we know that within three standard deviations of the mean, right, within three standard deviations of the mean, or z equal negative three to positive three, we'll have 99.7% of the run times, right? And remember, his z-score is beyond three right, it's beyond three standard deviations from the mean, it's 3.18 standard deviations from the mean. So that means here's Tom's run time beyond where 99.7% of the data will lie in between. His run time is very rare, right, only 0.3% of the run times are outside three standard deviations of the mean. So Tom is definitely a very unusually fast sailor. Okay, so let's move on to another example. One of the really great things about having data that is normally distributed is that calculating normal probabilities is really convenient. 
So let's talk through this other example. Suppose we have the 1.5 mile run times for sailors in the US Navy, and we know that it's normally distributed with a mean of 10.5 minutes and a standard deviation of 1.1 minutes. And we wanna find these probabilities. Starting with finding the probability that a sailor runs 1.5 miles in less than 10 minutes. I'll write this as the probability that x is less than 10, right? Where x is the runtime for the sailor. Drawing the normal distribution is often really helpful in these problems. So here in the center, I have the mean, which is 10.5, right? Their runtime average, the mean, is 10.5 minutes. So down here, below 10.5, would be 10. Okay, and we want to know the probability of running 1.5 miles in less than 10 minutes. So that will be this area under the curve to the left of 10. To find this probability, this is a cumulative probability that we can find using Excel. Okay, so to find this probability, I'll open up Excel, and then I'll click in, the, in one of the cells, and I type equal, then normdist, norm.dst, open your parentheses, x, x is 10, right, because we want to find less than 10 minutes, the mean was 10.5, and the problem told us that the standard deviation was 1.1. Cumulative, you will always write true for the normal distribution. Okay, For other distributions in Excel, you might write false. But for continuous distributions, you will almost always write true. So true, and then press Enter, and it gives you the answer. All right, so 32%, basically, 32% of the sailors will run less than 10 minute 1.5 miles. Okay, so the probability that x is less than 10, if I were to round it to two decimal places, is 0.32. Or in other words, you can expect that approximately 32% of the sailors will run 1.5 miles in less than 10 minutes. Okay, so next let's find the probability that a sailor runs 1.5 miles in more than 13 minutes. Okay, so in other words, the probability that x is more than 13. And once again, I want to draw my curve, my normal distribution curve. In the center, I have the mean 10.5. Okay, so where is 13? 13 is above the mean up here. And I'm trying to find the probability that x is more than 13. Basically, this area to the right of 13 is more than 13. OK, though now we need to be really careful, because the cumulative option in Excel only finds the area to the left. Though we do know that the total area under the curve is 1. So we're going to need to use the complement. The complement states that the probability that x is greater than 13 equals 1 minus the probability that x is less than 13. OK, and now we can use Excel to find this probability that x is less than 13. Okay, so once I'm in Excel, I can actually just change this, right? So I'm going to have 1 minus, and then instead of x being 10, now x is 13. Okay, so I have that 1 minus, and then this is the probability that x is less than 13. All right, and now tell me the probability that x is more than 13. If I were to round that, that's 0 0.01. Okay, or in other words, about 1% of the sailors will have 1.5 mile run times that's more than 13 minutes. Okay, lastly, let's find the probability that a sailor runs 1.5 miles between 10 and 13 minutes. 
Okay, and I could write this as the probability that we have 10 less than x less than 13. Okay, so you see x is there between 10 and 13. Again, drawing this distribution is going to be helpful, so let's draw it. Here in the center, we have our mean 10.5. Okay, so 13 is up here, above 10.5, and 10 is below 10.5. Okay, and I want to know this between probability. The area between 10 and 13. Okay, but once again, I have to be really careful because when I use Excel, I'm going to have a cumulative distribution that's only going to find the area to the left. So for example, if I were to start by finding the probability that x is less than 13, I would be finding all of this area back here. Right? That's all the way to the left of 13. Right? But that's too much. And how much too much is it? Well, the area that's less than 10, the area that's less than 10 needs to be basically subtracted off. If I subtract off the area less than 10, then I'll have that between probability. Okay, so I can do this in Excel. Let me go to Excel. I'm going to delete what I have there. So I'm going to type equals norm dist. So first I'll start with 13, the probability that x is less than 13, 10.5, 1.1, true, always true. And then I'll subtract off norm dist of x being less than 10, 10. 10.5, always for the mean, 10.5, 1.1 for the standard deviation, and true for cumulative. Oops. Okay. And then press enter, and we get 0.66 if I were to round that to two decimal places. So this equals 0.66. Okay. In other words, approximately 66% of the sailors will have run times between 10 and 13 minutes. Okay, and I've summarized what I've done here on this slide, if you want to pause and take a closer look. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you found this video helpful.